Hey everyone, this is Mark Philip at Studica, and I've got a follow-up to my previous isometric character controller video, which you can see if you click on the button on the screen right now. I highly recommend looking at that video before looking at this video, so you kind of have uh, the context of what I'm doing here. Uh, what we're going to be doing in this tutorial is basically implementing a jump for our isometric character controller. I had a couple people on my last video ask me specifically how they uh, how they could implement a jump feature. And it's actually pretty simple. Um, if you're interested in just the code, you want to skip me talking about this, um, then click on the link on the window right now. Now, before we jump into this, I want to talk about kind of the logic of jumping in a game. <clears throat> so let's consider a basic 2D side scrolling example. In a 2D uh, game, you basically have a normal coordinate plane like this, like you would see in uh, geometry or trigonometry or any other math discipline. If we want to make our character move in the positive x or negative x, we just change the x position of our character. Jumping is really no different. If we want to move uh, upward to create the illusion of jumping, then we just increment or change the value of our positive y-axis. Additionally, you can implement like a falling mechanic by doing a negative y uh, change of value. As far as jumping though, usually you have to say if the player presses a specific button, then we want to increment our positive y direction. So in a 2D game, you would have something like this. So we want our character to jump across a platform. We would increment the x axis value, uh, which would be handled by some other function. And then we would also be incrementing our y positive value uh, to implement a jumping feature. So by doing this, we can have our character both jumping and moving to the right at the same time. Now in a 3D game, it's really no different. And uh, consider our isometric example here, we have now the Z axis uh, and then our X axis and our Y axis. Uh, despite our perspective, our Y axis is not really changing here. All our axes, sorry, the only axes that are changing are gonna be our Z and X axis. Our Z is now pointed, say, 45 degrees from where it was, and same with the X, but our Y value is still just pointing straight up, so we can still use the Y axis to actually implement a jumping mechanic. Now, there are several ways you could implement a jumping mechanic, and which way you choose is kind of up to you. Um, for instance, you often have to consider things like, do I want forward momentum when my character jumps? Or do I want my character to be able to move back and forth when they're in the air, kind of like a lot of classic platformers do it? Uh, or maybe, do I want to use physics and gravity to dictate my upward and downward force? Or do I just want to directly manipulate the values myself? So there's all sorts of considerations to think about. Uh, generally, when I was coming up with this solution, I tried several implementations and uh, found one that I preferred. This is our scene, and I have my cube down here. And currently, if I play my game, I can move around, you know, using WASD like we did in my last tutorial. As for all the trees and stuff, I added that stuff later. Don't worry about it. Doesn't matter. So for the code, I'm not going to type everything out. I'm just going to go over the lines that I have added or changed. <clears throat> so in our character controller script, which is on our cube right here, so we can open up care controller. So in the global namespace of our character controller, uh, which is attached to our cube right here, we have uh, several new variables. So I have a boolean called jump, which is initially set to false. This is going to be used um, for our coroutine. Well, rather, it's going to be used for our logic so that we can't constantly jump multiple times in the air. We create two new floats. One is called jump height, the other is jump speed. I gave these default values of 8 and 10 respectively. Um, these are basically arbitrary values. I modified these based on what felt the best for the jumping mechanic. Um, we are not using jump speed for my first implementation, but I'll leave it here for the second implementation. And then we have a, a rigid body object set here. And we're gonna be using this to add force and utilize the gravity of our rigid body for a physics-based jumping. Now in our start function, we do have to get the component of the rigid body. So we say RB equals get component rigid body, and that will end up grabbing uh, this rigid body component so that we can manipulate it in code. In our update function, we have to add an if statement that grabs user input of the jump button, which is specified in our input settings in the ins uh, under our edit project settings menu. And we're also saying uh, we have to not be currently jumping. So this is what our jump boolean is used for. 
Uh, in here, we basically have a single line that says start coroutine uh, jump. And then we also have to implement an else statement for movement. Um, so basically, if we're not pressing in the jump input, then our user's pressing, uh, sorry, if we're not executing a jump, then we are executing our move function that we did in the last video. So let's look at our coroutine for jump. This is where all of our functionality is happening. I've done videos about coroutines in the past. The reason we want to use one here is so that we can basically control execution using yield return statements. Um, honestly, it just it makes it simpler to make more precise calculations, in my opinion. Uh, at the front here, we're going to create a float called original height. It's going to be set to our current transforms dot transform position dot y value. So. If you think about this, at the start, our character is on the ground, uh, probably at Y value of zero, depending on how your game is set up. We want to grab that value so that we can compare it in a while statement later. And you'll see how we do that. Next, we set our jump Boolean to true. And the reason we do this is so that we can't multiple execute this and continuously jump forever in the air. If I don't have this here, then we can just keep pressing spacebar and jumping like all the time and we'll be creating new threads of the coroutine and it, it, it will just it gets messy it's not what we want so we have to set this flag and then i do a yield return null here so that we wait a frame so that our uh, so that our code can basically make these changes happen uh before executing all this stuff here this is important because when i tried this without the yield return null our if statement here did not recognize jump as being set to true and it was enabling me to jump forever so I had to put this in here in order to stop that from happening you notice a lot of commented out stuff here this is for a second implementation I'll be talking about shortly but for now I'm talking about the physics implementation so what we do is we grab our rigid body and we do an add force and we do an add force in the direction upwards times our jump height value which was listed up here as 8f so this is basically going to be uh, adding a force upwards by a value of 8 on the y-axis. And we're going to be using a force mode dot impulse for that. And basically this is just the kind of force that's being applied. Impulse is an instant force that, think of it as um, like a bullet hitting something. So it's going to push our character upwards. So this is a physics driven event here. This is basically going to tell our rigid body to bump upwards into the air. And then how we fall down is basically dependent on the gravity of our game. Then what we do down here is we have a while statement that says if our transforms y position is greater than the original height, which is in my case zero, then we basically just loop until that's not the case. So basically what this line or sorry, what this while statement is doing is making sure that our character has hit the ground before we actually allow our character to jump again. So once we're touching our original Y position, we know that we're no longer jumping. So then our while statement exits, our jump gets set to false, we, uh, we yield for another frame, and then our coroutine exits, and this uh, if statement can then execute again. So let's go ahead and uh, if, you've, if you're writing all that, go ahead and save it. And then if we play our game, what will happen now is if we press our jump button, which for me is space, you'll see our square jump in the air, and we can keep moving while uh, doing so. Now you'll notice, like, you know, it's a very slow jump. Uh, this is all based on gravity and based on the add force that we utilized on our um, rigid body. Now we can change, uh, say we want to maybe jump a little less high. I could change jump height to, uh, let's say like 5F. And now I should jump a little less, yeah, so that's a little more constrained of a jump. Another thing to notice is that uh, when I do jump, I'm still able to move around in the air. Now, this is really common in the majority of video games I think I've ever played. You know, especially platformers, you generally want your character to be able to make uh, fine-tuned movement while they're in the air. There's some situations or some games where you might want a more realistic thing. So in that situation, what you would probably want is uh, forward momentum when you jump and that your character would continue moving in that direction. I'm not going to go into that here um, because our move function does not favor that kind of implementation right now. We could create that, um, but for the sake of this video, I'm not going to do such a thing. 
So that's our physics controlled rigid body implementation. Now let's look at a more uh, transform based implementation. So to do this, I'm going to uh, comment out our rigidbody.addForce and I'm going to uncomment a couple of other lines. So first of all, I'm going to keep this stuff up here the same. Uh, I'm going to take this float max height. I'm going to put it up here. So what this line is doing is we're specifying something called max height. And this float is equal to the original height plus our jump height, which is specified up here. So we have a jump height of five right now. So basically we're going to be looking at a value of five in the Y direction because my original height is going to be zero. But if your character was on a platform at say Y value two, then your max height would then be seven. Now we're also going to grab this uh, rigidbody.useGravity and set it to false. We're also going to put this up here underneath our floats. The reason I'm doing this is because I don't want gravity affecting our upward motion. Now this is a weird decision on my part and you don't always have to do this, um, but the way that our calculations are working you do sometimes run into an issue if your jump height is not very large, your gravity has the chance to actually pull your character down before you even really get off the ground. Um, so I'm doing this as kind of a hack, uh, but again, it's kind of all depends on what you want to do. You could leave gravity on and just make sure that your jump heights are always set to a decently high value. Um, but for this, I'm going to turn off gravity. And we're going to keep our jump flag set to true, and then we're going to wait a frame. Now I'm going to uncomment this while loop that I have. And clean this up a little bit. So my while loop here, our condition is that our Y position is less than our max height. So this is going to be our upward jumping motion. As long as our Y position has not reached our maximum height, then we are going to increment our position, uh, our entire position vector, by transform dot up, which is going to be one in the positive y direction, times time dot delta time times jump speed. We do time dot delta time to basically smooth out our transforms motion so that it looks smooth and uh, not clanky. And then we're multiplying by jump speed to determine basically how fast we're going to be hitting our, you know, how fast we're actually going to be jumping into the air. And my jump speed right now is set to 10. This should be decently fast. And then we're going to yield return null. So this is going to continuously execute until we hit our max height. And once we hit our max height, we'll exit our while loop and we'll do a turn on uh, gravity for our rigid body. So we know that once we exit or sorry, once we've jumped our maximum height, then we want gravity to take over and basically bring our transform down. And then uh, at this point, we go into our while loop like in our previous implementation. We're just going to keep looping until uh, we hit the ground again. And then we're going to have our rigid body turn on gravity again. We're going to set our jump to false and yield return null. So the main difference with this implementation is that our upward jumping is going to be based on transform movement. We're not going to be using a rigid body force to do this. However, we are still using gravity to pull our character down. So I'm going to go ahead and save this and play this. And now when I jump, you'll see my character jumps pretty high in the air pretty quickly and then falls back down. Now you'll notice this looks and kind of even feels less realistic than our previous implementation that used the forces of the rigid body. Um, but again, I, you know, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It just depends on what you're looking for in your game. This might be a good implementation for you. And if we wanted to uh, take this a step further, we could even do away with uh, the gravity entirely. So I can, uh, right here, after we exit our jumping, or sorry, after we've jumped to our max height, we can tell it not to turn gravity back on. And then instead we can, in our while statement here, decrement our position uh, by transform dot up times time dot delta time times jump speed. It's the same equation as this, except we're subtracting now. So what this is going to do is take our Y position and basically decrement it every frame. And then once we're back to our original height, we turn gravity back on for normal game motion and then set jump to false and we uh, yield return null. Now if I uh, play this, 
we'll see a little bit different of a downward motion. See, so now, now it looks much more like your old school, you know, Super Mario Brothers or, you know, your general 2D platformers before they had physics engines handling things. Now we're driving all of our jumping movement directly using the transform. Now the other thing is that we can change uh, some of these variables. You'll notice with our transform manipulation, we're kind of jumping higher and faster than when we were using our force with gravity. So I'm going to put jump height back to four and maybe put jump speed to like uh, eight. And let's see how that feels. Yes, yeah, so I'm jumping a little less, jumping a little slower. You know, um, these are just things that you can tweak. If we really wanted to make it easy, uh, we could expose these variables in the inspector by doing a serialized field. And now if you look over here on our character controller script, we have both of those listed here. And now while I play, I could, I could mess around with these and see what I like. Maybe bring jump height down to two. All right, now I'm going smaller. Maybe jump speed down to 5.4. Now I'm jumping slower. Or maybe I want jump speed really high. You know, <laughs> now I'm jumping really quick. Or maybe jump height and speed really high. Maybe I want a really high jump with a really high speed. You know, so you can get some really interesting interactions here. So that's about the gist of it. I went over about three different implementations here, and you know, hopefully you see how testing each one kind of gives you a better idea of how it's going to feel in the long run. So it's up to you as the developer or, or designer to determine you know what's going to work best for your game. So with that being said, if you have any other questions about isometric game development, uh, feel free to leave a comment and let me know and I'll try to address those and maybe make a video about them if uh, it ends up a lot of people have that same question. So thank you for watching and uh, have a good one.